Hello, students. We're now on unit one of our module one in chapter one. And we're looking at what is going to be considered a review of your introduction to psychology. We're looking at a scientific study now of human development. Now, we we'll use the scientific method within human development, since it's a science. And the scientific method, as you may recall, is composed of five steps. One is identifying the question. Two, forming a hypothesis. Three, choosing a research method or design. Four, collecting data. Five, drawing conclusions. And those are the five steps. And with the five steps of the scientific method, we go back and forth to validate and make sure it's reliable. So within that, when we look at the first one, we identify a question of scientific interest. That can come from previous research, a theory, or personal observation. Then step two, as a scientist, we form a hypothesis. And as researchers, I, our idea is about a possible answer to a research question. This hypothesis will then dictate research methods, design, and research analysis. So then the third step is where we choose a research method and a research design. And that's the way our hypothesis is investigated. Then we shall collect data for step four to test this hypothesis. So we collect a sample that represents our population. Then we go to the fifth step. The fifth step is where we then can draw conclusions from what we've gathered. The data is inferred and it's peer reviewed. And that then can lead to a theory or it can lead to theory modifications or theory changes. So then the next thing we do in this unit number four is we look at ethics and human development research. We look at institutional review boards, their work that prevents ethical violations. The ethical guidelines include the following. Ethical guidelines include protection from physical and psychological harm. It includes informed consent prior to the participation of our participants. It includes that we have to give confidentiality and then the last is we avoid deception and we debrief. At times though, deception is needed, such as when we have a placebo, so that the participant don't know what they, they have so the results can be more accurate. So then we go to research methods and design. When we are using various methods to investigate a human development, we use things like questionnaires, with, which are closed or open-ended. We use interviews, which are qualitative. We use observations. We also use ethnographic research, and also case studies, and biological methods. When we use experiments, we do that to help establish the cause and effect. In other words, experimental group will receive no treatment, control group receives no treatment, sorry, the experimental group receives the treatment, the control group receives no treatment. And recall these terms that you've already reviewed in Intro to Psychology. The independent variable, which is different for the experimental group than the control group. You remember the dependent variable, where the outcome that is measured is measured to calculate results of the experiment. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages to experiments. With experiments, the degree of control is a distinct advantage. But the disadvantage is application to real life. They're more controlled, they're more artificial than real life, which is less controllable. Then we have the natural experiment, 
which gives us very interesting scientific information about what exists naturally. So, this is the end of our Module 1, Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3, and Unit 4. Enjoy your reading. See you later.